All right, hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Monster Camp here on the 13 days of Monster Ween. For now, I think. I think this will be close to nearing the end of the 13 days of Monster Ween. So yeah, whatever. We're doing it live. <laughs> so we are trying to go for Ravi, the monster slayer who's been taken over by Hex, and we're not doing great. Yeah, no, we're not. We're not. We've been trying to get our smarts up, but our smarts have not been helping us. So we're just going to keep going to the woods then, I guess. Because <laughs> we keep failing because we're bad at the game. While hiking through the woods, you come across a bunch of delicious edible mushrooms. Well, you think they're edible anyway. I mean, you ate them. On a completely unrelated note, you also feel an ancient, all-powerful god who's timelessly intelligent and also really into vaporware for some reason. You gain two smarts for your dope conversation with the vaporwave god. Cool. I know a few people on the internet who would love that guy. Alex Fasciani being one of them. <laughs> Super beard bros. You're wandering around the camp hoping you'll bump into RV, but not in a creepy stalker way. No, geez, like regular. <laughs> Wee! Watch it fly! <laughs> yep, mm hmm. Watching it, it sure goes into the air just like all kites. <laughs> hey, beef! Come over here and tell Aravi how cool flying this kite is. Ugh, you don't know if you want to do that because clearly she doesn't think so and you're not in the business of contradicting hot people. But just to get a more holistic sense of what's going on, you ask Aravi what's going on holistically. Ugh, to make our symbiotic relationship as adventurer and curse attached to that adventurer more tolerable, we've created a schedule where we alternate doing things we like. So on some days I get to do awesome stuff like raiding dungeons and fighting trolls and delivering absurd objects to absurd people. And then on some days we get to chill at home watching TV and eating pizza and chips and candy. And Hex likes to pick up different hobbies they see on TV and then forget about them in a day or two. Hey, I do not! Then why do I have half-finished scarves, decoupage, pot holders, friendship bracelets, and a taxidermied rabbit in my skeleton? Oh, in your skeleton? Oh, jeez. Whoa, I thought it was I thought that was a typo, but no, it literally means in my skeleton. I'm I'm gonna finish all of those. I just haven't had time yet because of all the eating junk food and watching TV. Hex saw kite flying on some dumb TV show and insisted we try it for their activity today. So here I am, forced to endure the world's most boring hobby of throwing paper and string into the sky, or else forfeit my next dungeon crawl. Ravi can't pull the plug on Hex's kite flying without some serious consequences, but you can't let Ravi just be bored. God, no, that's not how this love works. You have the answer. It's an option between one of two things. Ravi loves upgrading all her gear with magic and whatnot. Upgrade the kite by tying some blades to it and see what happens. That's boldness. Enter and conquer the scene of hardcore hyper competitive kite flying. Nope. This is boldness. 100%. It includes knives. Knives are always bold. What? Shit. No. What? What? Knives are always bold. Knives are always bold, though. Knives are always bold. Gut instinct. Why? <laughs> I can't be SMRT. No! <laughs> no! I'm no kite expert, but wouldn't tying blades to it make it impossible for a kite to fulfill its actual purpose, which is to fly? No, you say, in a stunning counter-argument. <laughs> yes. Well, you can't argue with that. This is probably another one of Beef's trademark horny schemes to impress a campmate because horny. And you really can't argue with that. <laughs> Beef is just throwing out random ideas that Aravi might happen to like based on her interests. <laughs> whoa, 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 Beef, do you really think one of my interests is just blades? Just like putting blades on random things? Because it's definitely not. Uh, yes, I have my blades for fighting and my blade helmet for wearing while fighting and my blade boots so that I can stab people when I kick them while fighting. And some things are better when you add blades, like roller and bay. But kites? <laughs> Absolutely not. Hex and Ravi leave to go do knife macrame, leaving you alone with nothing but a pocket full of knives and a broken dreams. You lose two charm and one fun. Well, thank God it wasn't friggin' smarts, because Jesus Christ. Anyone know a good ghost story? Ooh, a good ghost story, you're saying? Well, I know a good ghost story. It's called My Love Life, because it's gonna be dead soon here, real quick. Oh, yeah, Damien, what up, dude? That's dope. I love it with all the eyes everywhere. It's awesome. You come upon Aravi scribbling furiously in a notebook, glaring at anyone who dares come near her, which is mostly Damien who keeps trying to sneak a peek. Hey, could you maybe fuck off, Lave? I'm trying to journal and let off steam, and you're really making me feel the opposite of calm and introspective. 
Ugh, come on! Just let me see what you're writing! I won't tell anybody! The curiosity is killing me! Killing you? Hmm. Huh, interesting. Let me take a note of... Er, I mean, stop talking to me! Oh, this is not fair! Didn't your therapist or whatever tell you that you need to share your burdens with others? Share your fucking burdens with me! Come on, Robbie. <laughs> Ooh, fusing your own words against you, Robbie. I'm gonna use Coach's words. The ball's in your court now. I don't want the ball! Can't you go bother? <laughs> While she's screaming and flailing through, she accidentally drops the notebook. It flips open to a page filled with doodles of Damien being stabbed, beheaded, eaten by a lawnmower, etc. Uh, 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 are these uh, plans to murder me? Shut up. No! What on earth gave you that stupid idea? Uh, because the header says Damien murder plans, notebook 5 of 17. <laughs> Obsessed much. No, you can't prove that's mine. I'm being framed. Framed, I say. But you were literally just holding it. If there's one thing those two excel at, it's pointless arguing and yelling. You should put an end to this argument before your eardrums rupture. Aravi, here you wrote, I hope to one day have Damien's heart, but like his literal beating heart, which I will have removed from his bleeding chest after I murder him. Or, these aren't plots to murder you, Damien. They're plots to murder me, Damien LeVay, was my nickname back in middle school. Alright, so I guess that means me. We're trying to pin the thing on me. So this one would be for Damien. That one would be for Ravi, I'm certain. I'm pretty sure. Fuck yeah, off. there we go. <laughs> what? Why was my full name your fucking nickname? <laughs> I think the better question is, why is Beef's nickname your nickname too? That's hella derivative, dude. But it's not a nickname. It's my literal actual name. Ha, a likely story. Beef has been going by Damien LeVay since the seventh grade. Clearly, she called dibs. I've been going by Damien LeVay for 21 fucking years! Ha <laughs> ha, ah, anger. The last refuge of the totally owned. You really gonna take that shit, Damien? Mm -hmm. Of course I'm not! Hey, I wasn't talking to you, poser. I'm talking to the real Damien LeVay. Yeah. It's my name and I'll fucking kill you for it if I have to! Not Damien, not Vey! Damien starts coming at you with a knife. You're ready to die. Getting stabbed over a horny lie you told is how you were always meant to go. But before he can even stand up, Arabi grabs Damien and suplexes him into unconsciousness. Oh, a critical hit. Ha! What an idiot trying to kill Beef without a proper plan. I didn't realize this was an amateur hour. How underwhelming. Damien's clearly easy prey. Maybe I should have been spending all this time plotting to murder Beef. She seems like a much worthier target and a way better Damien LeVay. No. Uh, you know that the whole Damien LeVay nickname thing was a lie, don't you? I can't talk now. I've got a murder to plot. Watch your back, Beef, you sexy loser. The Slayer is back, baby! She runs off, cackling maniacally. What an adorable little murderess. You can't wait to see how she decides to assassinate you. In bed. With probably her mouth. <laughs> uh, a little too far that time, but I like it. I like it. I like it. Alright, so we got more choices to make here. We could just keep trying to go for smarts. Or we could try and go to creativity. Wait, yeah, creativity is scouted HQ. Yeah, right, good. Let's do it. Oh, that's cute. It's a pup. You just fork. The neck isn't, the neck lines aren't drawn in though, so it's a beheaded pup for now. That day in Monster Scouts, you all learn how to build scarecrows. That's vaguely nature related, right? You decide to take it a step further though. You had a magical crystal you found in a cave last month to your scarecrow to turn it into a sentient being. The Scarecrow is very grateful to have been made alive. You take your new friend out for a soda and have a very pleasant afternoon. Then you're forced to disassemble him so the next group of scouts can use the materials. Your Scarecrow begs you not to relinquish your gift of life, but you're a dedicated monster scout first. The scouts appreciate your dedication to the organization. You're awarded to creativity. Nice. After that, you head to the lake with Hex and Ravi. Ravi's testing out her new Zora armor, and you're helping Hex chug as much lake water as possible. Such. This is so awesome, you guys! I can breathe underwater and do a whirlpool attack! Gods, I'm so glad I spent 200 million rupees on these greaves! Sorry, my mouth was full of lake water. I was trying to say, fuck yeah, this is fun as shit! Lake time with beef, fucking classic vibes! Suddenly, y'all hear a weird voice calling out to you from across the lake. Hail, adventurers! Heed my message! You look over and see a messenger emerging emerging from the trees. He's holding a leather scroll and he looks super stressed out. Huh, that messenger looks familiar. <laughs> I swear I recognize him. Maybe someone I cursed in the past. 
Adventurer Robbie, Adventurer Hex, Adventurer Beef, I have searched for many moons. Uh, to deliver. Uh, <coughs> uh. Yeah, 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 you've got an important message for us. Life or death, blah, blah, blah. We know the deal. Give me the scroll, noob. The messenger gives Robbie the scroll, but right afterwards he collapses onto the ground. He appears to be dead. Psh, should have had a stamina potion, am I right? Anyway, looks like the scroll says, venture to the northern wood, bring this scroll, the ring of sustenance awaits you. Adventure awaits. Wait, man, if that guy had the ring of sustenance, he would have been fine. He would have been sustained eternally. You guys, this scroll has a main quest energy. It's kind of weird, but I bet this is an invitation to a dope-ass dungeon. Ooh, I can smell the loot already. Ugh. Holy shit, hold everything. I just realized why I recognize this messenger. He's an actor. I saw him on TV in a commercial for that new bagel place that's opening up around here. <gasps> then, if he's an actor, that can only mean the Ring of Sustenance is the new bagel store. Aravi, that scroll is a dope-ass guerrilla marketing advertisement. Yes. Ugh. Ah, no, it's definitely a dungeon invite. Not everything is about bagels, Hex, and the Ring of Sustenance is a super dumb name for a bagel store. Psh, not everything is about motherfucking dungeons, little miss dungeon liker. You know what, Hex? I do like dungeons, and I'm not ashamed of it, you green fart cloud. Huff my shorts, you loser ass, Sundere ass, RPG ass, nasty smelling ass, full inventory ass, Koopa Troopa looking ass, bitch. Damn. He went a little too far, I think. He Hex went a little too far. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. You've been waiting for Hex and Arabi to have an argument so you could support one of them in a heroic gesture of romantic friendship. Hex aside. Wait, does that mean we can date Hex eventually? Nice. Hex is right. I just found that messenger's IMDB page. His name is Todd Zombiehead, and he's defo an actor. Arabi's right. There's no actor, and I can prove it by hurling his corpse into the sea. Oh, that's got to be bold, right? <laughs> right? Because that sounds like... Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm just going to go with... I mean, my gut instinct says hurl his body into the sea, but I've been wrong every single time. But I know if I don't go by my gut instinct, I'm going to hate myself. So, hurl his corpse. Yes! Thank God. Uh, Beef, I think that messenger is an actor, so I don't think he's actually dead. Probably wouldn't be super chill to throw... Fuck yeah, Fuck yeah Beef! Let's hurl his corpse into the sea! Aravi is very psyched about your corpse hurling idea. You three drag the corpse to a nearby cliff overlooking the majestic stormy ocean. <gasps> Damn! Those are some big waves. Kind of makes you think about how small and insignificant we all are. Am I right? <laughs> Psych! The ocean can eat my ass. Shut up, Hex. Okay, Beef, time to hurl. I'm thinking we do a classic dead or alive test. We toss it in, and if it floats, it was a corpse. And if it doesn't float, then, uh, we get all the experience points for killing the messenger. Uh, it's a win-win, really. God, I can't believe I have to put down my pizza roll blasted goldfish and be the fucking voice of reason here. I hate being the voice of reason. It's not a vibe. He's got pizza roll blasted goldfish? I thought they stopped making those. But holy shit, this makes zero sense, Arabi. We got totally distracted. Even if you prove this guy is actually dead, that doesn't help us figure out the scrolls. Mm. Oh my god, just let me throw the corpse into the ocean. I know it doesn't help us that much, but I really want to toss him. I haven't thrown a body off a cliff in like two whole months. You know what? I right, do it. Yeet that man back to the mother ocean. Yeah. Yes. Okay, beef. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hurl. You throw the messenger into the ocean. His body hits the water and makes a huge splash. You all have a big laugh about it and high five each other. Play of the game. See, this totally proves my point. Throwing corpses into the sea is kick ass. <laughs> I still think I'm right about the bagel shop, but I'll admit that splash was dope. Now let's blindly follow the scroll into the northern woods. Let's adventure together. Fuck yeah, and you're coming too, Beef. I'm officially making you our third party member for this quest. I know you're only level three, but don't worry. I'll keep you safe while we're in the dungeon. Just stay close to me, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, only because you're asking though, not because any, um, not because I want to. Not like I want to be holding your hand and, and, you know, maybe put my arm around your... Definitely not. It's for safety. It's, it's a safety thing. Yeah. Putting my arm around you is definitely for a safety thing. 100%. Got it. Okay, so now that we're not thirsty anymore... <laughs> let's see. We can go smarts, boldness, or creativity. Let's just go... Um, oh, I think we need more smarts, honestly. Boldness is good, creativity is good, our charm is super, super bad. I mean, we could try and go for charm a little bit, a little bit, I guess. But it, it doesn't matter, it's a dump stat, I'm pretty sure, so... Uh, 
Yeah, let's mm, yeah, let's mm, yeah, let's just go check. Let's go smarts. Let's go smarts. Today you decide to hike all the way across the woods. You want to see what's on the other side? It's a long, treacherous hike that ends up only taking an hour. I guess the woods aren't that big after all. How do you and your friends get lost in them so often? Anyway, it turns out there's a library on the other side of the woods. You go in and read some books or something and gain two smarts. You already knew Arabi was loaded with bravery, determination, and chutzpah. I guess it's chutzpah. It's how you say that, right? It's, it's the chutzpah. Gotta get the, 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 the glottal, like the throat in the back there. The chutzpah. I'm pretty sure. Right? I mean, if you guys are actually, I think it's Jewish Hebrew, something like that. Right? Hebrew, I'm pretty sure, is the, the Jewish language. If you guys know if I'm right about that, go ahead. I don't know a ton of stuff about other languages. Just what I sort of know. So if I'm wrong, eh. If I'm right, eh. But I like saying chutzpah. It's fun. But as she roots through her bag, it's clear she's loaded with some pretty sick items as well. Why are my battle axes plus one through plus 200 all of it order? I got bored while you were sleeping and arranged them by color. Aravi rolls her eyes and drops all the battle axes on the ground to be sorted later. That's 200 axes. That's a lot of friggin' axes. Oh, here's that Alexandria's Cursed Emerald diadem I found in that one dungeon. And may I just say, I'm very cool about not being the only curse in your life. Oh, shit! It's friggin' the, 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 the drill sergeant. You know? The German the German drill sergeant or whatever, the camp counselor. Miss Mishra, how dare you litter on the hallowed grounds of Camp Spooky? Oh, I'm not littering, Camp Director Miss Weaving. Camp Director, that's who she was. I was just looking through my bag for... You're telling me that all of these items were in that one small bag? Likely story. And what is this bottle of booze? That's not booze, that's my therapist. Then you need a second therapist to help you deal with the fact that you keep your first therapist trapped in a bottle. If that were true, which it is obviously not, and I can prove it. Let's see exactly what kind of spirits are in here. If it's Miss Geist's toilet vine again, I swear. Oh, it's actually the fairy in a bottle. I forgot. Wasn't this, wasn't she voiced by Susie Mortimer? Was it? Jesus, oh, I miss it. <laughs> oh, Camp Director Miss Weaving raises an interesting point about keeping me in a bottle, Ravi. Do you think you feel the need to keep people physically tied to you because of your brother Celil's disappearance? So you didn't sneak booze in? You snuck a pet into camp? That's even worse! I'm confiscating it immediately! She's not a pet, she's my therapist! And I'll prove it by showing you how calm and level-headed therapy has made me! I've been working so hard at therapy and I'm getting so good at therapy! I appreciate the enthusiasm, but therapy isn't something you get good at. No, I'm slaying therapy! And I'm going to prove it by... 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 Beef, how am I going to prove how good I am at therapy so Miss Weaving gives Nora back? Oh yeah, her name was Nora. I forgot. It's been a long time. You've done dream interpretation and therapy, right? Demonstrate analyzing the shit out of a dream. This may not be spooky high, but you can still ace a test. The ultimate test, the Rorschach test. Okay, so, um, the Rorschach test might be smarts or creativity. Um, this might be fun. Right, analyze it. That might be fun or smarts. So, uh, or the Rorschach test could be fun because shit, shit. Oh, God damn. Why is everything between like three stats all the time for me? Why is it never clear? It's never clear. I don't like it. <laughs> You've done dream interpretation in therapy, right? Demonstrate analyzing the shit of a dream. That could be bold or it could be creative. I'm thinking this one might be fun. So I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with the the, the, the dream because I'm the Rorschach test really seems like smarter fun. So I'm just going to go, going to go at the top here. Yes, it was creative. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I'm so good at this game. <laughs> I, I'm terrible at this game. Don't, don't ever listen to me bragging. That's just the hype. Oh, that's true. I'm always explaining my dreams to Nora, even when she asks me to stop and move on. Well, Aravi, even though dreams can reveal what's on your subconscious mind, it's still important to confront the realities of day-to-day -day life. And... But now I'm going to use all that dream analysis to get you unconfiscated. So you see the therapy trap we said is finally going to be sprung. Uh, therapy isn't a trap, Aravi. Okay, you guys, everyone, listen to the dream I had, and then I'm going to explain the dream I had, okay? <laughs> yes, everyone loves hearing about other people's dreams. This is a well-known fact. Well, I mean, depends. Because certain people have boring dreams and tell Randy Beeman stories. And if you don't know what a Randy Beeman story is, please, for the love of God, 
go search up Randy Beeman Animaniacs, and you'll understand what a Randy Beeman story is. What, what, what a Randy Beeman story is. Sorry. <laughs> A Randy Beeman story is essentially like it always starts out with like so one time I, I was having this dream where I had a big glass of milk and I was in my kitchen alone and so I went to drink the big glass of milk and I finished it and then I realized that I was still home alone and I just went to the fridge and got another glass of milk. Okay, bye. That that's a Randy Beeman story. That's because it goes nowhere. It, it's nothing. And some people will tell that as like a a a, a dream. And it's like, that's not interesting. What was the, what was the room like? Like, you know, was it twisted or I sometimes tell my dreams to people because like, they're just weird and they're stupid. And they're like, I'll be like, the only thing I remember about my dream was that there was a purple dog who spewed spaghetti and that's it because that's interesting. At least that's a funny thing to like think of, right? I wouldn't bring it up. If it was just milk in a jar. That'd be stupid. Okay. Once upon a time and the time was last night, I went to sleep and I had a dream and this is the dream I had. I was walking through the woods and I got lost, which obviously indicates that in real life, I'm definitely 100% sure of what I'm doing, which is why my subconscious needed a break from being so sure. A bear came out of the bushes and he offered me an ice cream cone. The ice cream was pink, which proves I don't have any unresolved issues with my brother's disappearance. The sprinkles on the ice cream cone turned into dolphins and they flew into the sky and swam through the clouds, meaning that I am badass destined to conquer the very stars. That's also a... Uh a reference to, um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The bear invited me to croquet, but the mallets were actually the corpses of all my friends who had each been killed in painful, horrible ways as a result of my failures, which shows that I'm a healthy, well-adjusted person and the therapy totally worked. So you see, Camp Director Miss Weaving, this proves that Nora is my therapist and not my pet. Um... I'm going to give you the fairy back just on the off chance she is your therapist because you clearly have a lot of issues to work through, Miss Misra. Ha! Shows how much she knows about the dream analysis. A lot of issues to work through. <laughs> Ridiculous, right, Nora? Right, right, Nora? R right? I I am I right? Tell me I'm right, Nora. Right, right, Nora? Right, Nora? Uh, uh, Aravi, uh, why do you think it's so important for you to feel like you're winning at therapy and cured of your issues? Therapy is a process. A process in which I explain my awesome dreams. Let me tell you about the one I had with the woolly mammoths on RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, RuPaul. It's a play for RuPaul. I like that. Nora dutifully listens to Arabi's dreams, including the part where she and Beef got up to something she won't specify. Nice. You gain two boldness and one smarts. Nice. Nice. I'm doing that gif where the, where the blonde kid's sitting at the computer and he turns to the screen and he does the thumbs up and the head nod. That's how nice I'm feeling right now. All right, so let's go sit with Aravi and Dahlia again. I want Aravi and Joy to sit together again. It's always a fun combo. You're loitering by the campfire when you notice Aravi and Dahlia whispering to each other and giggling. You're terrified of both of them, but the giggling is adorable. <laughs> ah, Beef, join us. Aravi and I are having our official weekly girl talk session. We both love girl talk. So what? It's a guilty pleasure. If you tell anyone, I'll kill you. <laughs> Indeed. Both Aravi and I are monsters of the battlefield and masters of the feminine arts. It's so nice to talk with someone who gets it. It kind of is. Speaking of which, I wanted to ask you, who does your war paint? You are rocking that Furiosa charcoal look when we were both beheading those undead beasts. Oh man, Furiosa was a dope character from uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Like that movie a lot. Hell yeah, I do my war paint myself. It's a critical part of my battle ritual. No way! That's sick, Dahlia. I usually have Hex do mine. I kind of suck at blending. One time I tried to do a smoky eye and accidentally set my forehead on fire. <laughs> I freaking love doing Arabi's war paint. I would do it every day, except Arabi only likes it done for main story battles, and I'm also very lazy and unreliable. Psh, Arabi, war paint should be done anytime you're in combat. It's how warriors channel their inner blood horniness. You gotta do it for you, you know? Ooh, bl blood? Blood horniness, you say? Um... I, uh, next time I try and go for Dahlia, I should remember that uh, whenever she gets dolled up, it's because of uh, blood horniness. Yeah. yeah, I got it. Okay, good. <clears throat> yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm not thinking about that. No, whatever. <laughs> Bullshit. I can't see my own war paint. It makes no sense to spend 20 minutes doing it if it's just going to be the last thing a few side quests or see before they die. I can't technically die, but if I could, I'd want my last memory to be of Dahlia in a Braveheart looking ass blue and white war paint look. Holy shit, I would look amazing in Braveheart war paint, and I've been meaning to conquer Scotland for a while. Fuck that sick. Whoa, Dahlia, maybe we could do matching war paint looks sometime. That would be so intimidating. 
Can you imagine? Our enemies would cower at the sight of us. They already do, but they would cower even more. Okay, obviously I'm going to do matching more paint on you two, but what look should we go for? Handprint vibes, urban camo, knife eyes? What do you think, Beef? You're not a war paint expert, but you are an expert at impressing your crush. These two cuties have got pretty different aesthetics, though. What do you suggest? True beauty comes from what's inside you. That's why I make my war paint using tons of blood. Or war paint is awesome, but when I really want to slay, I search for my secret weapon. Or I reach for my secret weapon. A legendary limited edition prestige battle skin. That's going to be a Robbie right there. She loves that prestige battle skin. Well, uh, you're saying you skin and the skin is somehow a legend? Beef, I got confused after, like, the third adjective. Aravi, do you get this? Oh my gods, you have one of the limited edition skins? They are super rare. How the fuck did you get your hands on one of those? Seriously, Beef, that's so fucking cool. I was grinding so hard trying to get the Mecha Fawn skin, and I didn't even get one of the legendaries. Oh, I remember that grinding session. You didn't take a pee break for, like, three days straight. I almost made it through a full season of 90 Day Fiance. Legit, I don't watch 90 Day Fiance, but... Uh, what is it? Married at first sight? Yeah, married at first sight's a uh, guilty pleasure. Wait, Aravi, I have no idea what you're talking about. This is girl talk time. I demand that you explain it to me. Okay, Dahlia, so the first thing you need to know is that there are in-game skins, and obviously everyone starts with the same shitty default skins based on their fighter class. But there are only three legendary skins, and somehow Beef got her hands on one of them. It's like super exclusive. Okay, so you're saying that there are some rare skins, but I still don't get how you acquire the skins. Is it a hunting thing? Oh, oh, I get it. You're taking pelts like from a deer. Ah, no, Dahlia. I'm talking about skins from loot boxes. You buy the loot box, open it, deer comes out, you kill the deer, bam, rare skin. Huh, these skins cost money like actual currency? Yes, Dahlia, they cost a lot of money. If they cost a lot of money, what weird ass is selling these skins? I don't know, Dahlia. They're either sold by big corporations that benefit from in-game microtransactions or the actual deer that owned the skin before. Hard to say. Why would someone pay a merchant to get skins when you could just go hunt a deer yourself? This makes no sense. Because it's exclusive and limited and awesome. Ah, Dahlia, you just don't get it. I can't believe I'm saying this, but you're kind of being a noob. Dahlia's totally confused by Robbie's skin I thought it said skin tanning, but it's skin standing. Nice play on words top notch and takes off to one go hunt some deer and two meditate upon their valuable pelts listen beef i know this is a lot to ask but can i borrow your battle skin just for a little bit i can't believe i'm saying this but please well asking for a favor aravi is devastatingly cute you agree immediately i mean the whole reason you got the skin was to impress her in the first place <laughs> check me out the legendary skin makes me look like a terrifying golden warrior goddess check out my aesthetic but not actually functional deer wings Arabi is clearly overjoyed with your battle skin and with you it's a good thing you spent $325 to get it totally worth it baby all right bring out your flasks I'll use my skills weekend arrives wow look who's here really I don't know who in the right mind would take such a risk to visit my bar I guess you have more thirst than common sense. Wow. Let's get ready to party. All right, so I think he might be saying the same things over, so I might just skip Juan's dialogue from now on, but let's go. Is there a Manhattan? Oh, there's a Manhattan in the top right. Okay. So we're going to uh, we're going to avoid the top right until later in the in the round. But the Manhattan will give us plus 1 stats. Actually, you know what? We know what the Manhattan does. Let's go for a uh Oh, let's go for a pixel drink. Oh shit, no. Oh, I got this one, the Oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah, the cough I beats to relax to. That's right. Okay, so I got this one. I don't know what this will do, but hey. Wow, cough I beats to relax to study too easy drink I created for when I need to go on long hours studying magic. It will surround you with the entrancing embrace of lo fi. Surrender it to the power of lo fi. Now we're talking. What did it do? Oh, did it change the music to lo fi beats? That's kind of dope. It, that's that's pretty dope. Still hard to believe you drank that. Good luck, I guess. My name is Juan. So is it actually all lo-fi? Hold on, let me just listen for a minute. Holy crap, it is. It's all lo-fi. That's awesome. Okay, so we've got smarts, boldness, and creativity. You know, let's go back to the camp. I want to see what they're doing at the HQ. 
You spend your day trying to learn how to use the North Star to know your location and never get lost. It's a fierce challenge and everyone gets like super lost. You say fuck it and try to text the North Star to ask for directions. Maybe no one ever asked. Of course this achieves nothing, it's a star and you should stop trying to resort to sheer absurdity to solve your problems. You get no badge, no one does, it was all a trick test and it wasn't even a night time, but Coach awards you with too creativity for your lateral thinking. Of course Coach would send us on a way to use the North Star to guide us when it's literally daytime. A few hours later, you're out adventuring with Arabi and Hex, y'all followed the scroll from that messenger and now you're deep in the northern woods. You've already found several environmental puzzles and a few cryptic clues. With each solved puzzle, you draw closer to the secret location of the Ring of Sustenance. Strangely, all of the puzzles and clues so far have been vaguely bagel-themed. <laughs> Whoa, once I rearranged these glowing stones to spell Lux, a scroll appeared. Damn, this is some dope-ass gorilla bagel shop marketing. This promo slaps. Shut up. For the last time, Hex, these clues are leading us to a dungeon. Not a fucking bagel store. What if it's a bagel dungeon? Oh my god, the best of both worlds. It's so obvious. Ugh. You'll see when we get there. What does the scroll say? Psh, whatevs, bagel hater. The scroll says, You near the end of your quest. Triumphant adventurers, walk two miles to the north. The ring awaits you there. Whoa. Ah. Finally, we've solved these annoying intro puzzles, and now we get to dive headfirst into some sweet, sweet dunge. Gods, I hope it's multi-leveled with a super complicated layout. Bagel. Totes. But just in case it ends up being a bagel shop, I should prep first. I gotta make sure my patented cream cheese utility belt is full of maximum flavors. Gross, but also, yeah, we should get ready. I should head back to my stash and optimize my inventory. I'm all short range, high damage right now, if you know what I mean. Aravi puts a bag over your head and leads you to her nearest fully stocked weapon stash. She starts reviewing her inventory. Okay, just gotta pack enough for a full dungeon run. Let's go with 20 green potions for healing and 20 red potions for mana. Wait, red potions for mana? Alright, maybe her mana's red. I'm not gonna judge. And, and 400 apples in case I need a quick plus 5 health. What? I'll need all 128 different types of crafting materials. Dungeons are unpredictable. You never know when a mini boss is going to be weak against Iridium Core. And then I have my weapons, Obby. As of now, I've got 8 swords and 14 crossbows equipped, each with slightly different attacks and range stats. Those are all 100% necessary. <laughs> Damn, Robbie, Hoarders, my hoarding addiction called? They want their absurd collection of useless shit back. Okay, I have one last inventory spot open. Oh, I know. I'll take the axe of Golden Demise. I looted it off a Lightning Warlock miniboss last week. Fuck that, Arabi. You know we share inventory space, and I need that slot. I'm planning to get covered in schmears, so I've got to take my package of 200 paper napkins. Mm. Napkins? They're a complete waste of inventory space. We're going to be fighting to survive in that dungeon, okay? I don't have time for your snack food nonsense. Ugh, dude. You take up like 99% of the inventory space. You can't give me one slot. Where did you learn how to share? The toilet school? <laughs> the toilet school. Uh, that's dumb, and I love it. Arabi and Hex are fighting again, but luckily for them, you're an expert at conflict resolution. What's the best use for Arabi's last precious inventory slot? Hex, the Axe of Golden Demise isn't for slaughtering enemies. It's for slaughtering bagels by chopping them perfectly in half. There we go. My, uh, my headphone cord was slapping me in the chin as I was trying to talk and it was getting distracting and I couldn't read. <laughs> and but that's, um, that's not an excuse. That's actually what's happening, even though I can't read on a, no on a normal day. So... Aravi napkins are just tiny shields. They might not give a huge defensive boost, but you've got 200 of them here. Mamma mia, that's a lot of shield. <laughs> Mamma mia, that's a lot of shield. So let's see here now. It's for chopping bagels. That could be creativity or boldness. Uh, that could be smarts. Hmm. Hmm. I, I'm, I'm probably just going to go with the axe because it's bold. Right? Napkins are tiny shields. I mean, that could be creativity. But if it's between creativity and boldness, then the top one wins, right? Oh, it's fun! Holy shit! It must have been fun and charm. Oh my god, it was fun and charm. I am not good at this game. Bye! <laughs> Just yeet me out the window. I'm done. Psh, bullshit, Beef. You're making up a dumb lie to trick me and impress a Robbie. I'm not going to fall for it like all the other idiots around here. Uh, no, uh, she is right. The Axe of Golden Demise is the pinnacle of bread-slicing weaponry. I'll prove it. Aravi equips the Axe of Golden Demise as her default weapon. She now has immunity against lightning-based attacks. All right, I'm ready. Now we just need a test bagel. Hex, you got one on you? <laughs> you know I do, mofo. Well, there goes my headphones off of my rack. Jesus. 
I clipped them onto my microphone stand and they fell off so that we wouldn't slap me in the face. God damn it. Why is life hurting me? Heck, someone's a bagel out of thin air. It's impressive, but also unsettling. Where the fuck did that bagel come from? The inventory, duh. Was it in their pocket? Or is this one of Hex's supernatural abilities? Can they summon bagels? I'm the narrator, and even I don't know. Throw the bagel at me as hard as you can. I'll show you the true power of the Axe of Golden Demise. Believe it! Bagels! <laughs> Whatevs. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Bagel yeet! The bagel flies through the air, and a Ravi slices through it perfectly. The Axe of Golden Demise shimmers as its legendary blade parts the bread in twain. Aravi's technique was so flawless that somehow toasted the bagel. One slice lands in Hex's hand, and the other lands in your hand. Mmm, toasty. <laughs> oh. My. God. I was so wrong. This thing is awesome. Fuck the napkins. This unbelievably sharp murder weapon is the ultimate bagel-eating accessory. Poggers. <laughs> poggers? I can't believe Dodger just said poggers. <laughs> Fucking poggers. <laughs> Uh, uh, goddamn poggers in the chat! Jesus Christ! Oh god damn, it broke me. I'm dead. I'm done. I'm over. Uh, oh, okay, I'm taking a drink. Hold on. Beer. God damn it. Yup, didn't you read the flavor text? The axe was crafted by a legendary blacksmith who was, uh, made out of bread! Right, Beef? Hmm. Psst, um, thanks. I really wanted to test out this bad boy. When we get to the dungeon, I'll slaughter a goblin in your honor. Once again, your conflict resolution skills have saved the day. Now prepare yourself. The ring of sustenance awaits. Yes. Oh, wait. Is this our actual ring of sustenance thing? Oh, my God. We will make it to the ring of sustenance. Is this a secret ending? Are we getting a secret ending? Oh, my God. Um, I, I want to get my smarts up just one more time. So it's 13, 16, 14 at least. That day you go to the woods searching for edible roots to make a wilderness tea. You find lots of roots. Beetroot, ginger root, the square root of pie, the root of all evil. You brew it all together, and it's the most delicious tea you've ever had. It's so rooted with knowledge that you gain two smarts. Afterwards, you meet up with Aravi and Hex. Ever since you received that mysterious scroll, you three have been on a long, arduous quest. You've solved countless puzzles, followed clue after clue, prepped your inventory, and now you're finally here. The secret location of the Ring of Sustenance. What the fuck? It's just a big dumb wall. This isn't a bagel shop or a dungeon. I want a refund. Adventure awaits. Oh, that's not just a wall. Check out the weird markings. We gotta insert this scepter from the second puzzle and there, that should do it. Suddenly the ground below you starts shaking. The wall crumbles away and opens up a huge dark cavern. You hear that telltale door opening music cue. You also hear a deep, mysterious voice emanating from the cavern. Adventurers, if you seek the Ring of Sustenance, triumph over evil in this dungeon of bread. <laughs> yes! That's a motherfucking dungeon! I told you so! Ha! Ugh, you were right. There's no arguing with that mis music cue. Let's get this over with, Aravi. At least let me eat some bread demon flesh while you're in there. Y'all head into the dungeon of bread, and Aravi is absolutely crushing it. She solves three puzzles immediately, and finds the dungeon map without taking any damage. Ew. Boo! Dungeon maps suck! Why would you need a map of the dungeon? What is this, school? Hmm. Are you kidding me? The dungeon map is half the fun, and it gets even better when you get the compass! I love how she's essentially just Link. I love it. Aravi takes out the mini-boss in three hits and locks down the boss key. Soon you arrive at the boss chamber, it's quiet. Too quiet. Oh. This is going to be such a sick boss fight. Check out that huge lava pit in the middle of the room. Pretty dodgy if you ask me. I bet the boss is going to pop out of- ah! Aravi was totally right. The dungeon boss leaps out of the huge pit of lava. It's a massive fire-breathing lizard. Oh, it's a Dodongo. You pieces of shit come into my house, the dungeon boss roars. Fucking fight me to the death, bitch. Yikes, you cower in the corner while Aravi battles the dungeon boss. She dodges his attack sequences and gets in a few parries, but her attacks don't seem to be working. Unbelievable. Shit, why isn't it taking any damage? This was a bread-based dungeon. I didn't expect a fire-type boss. My weapons aren't optimized for this. Holy shit, we're all gonna die. I can't die. I have leftovers in the fridge waiting for me. Who will eat them if I'm not there? Calm down. We need to figure out the dungeon boss's weakness. Everybody has a weakness, right? I can't believe I'm saying this, but... Beef, I need your help. You're going to help Aravi, or you're going to literally die trying? Quick... What's the best way to figure out this dungeon boss's fatal weakness? Attack the dungeon boss in its heart. 
text its ex-lovers and ask if they'd be willing to spitefully share its weaknesses, attack the dungeon boss in its privacy, hack into its laptop, and snoop through its search history until you find its weakness. That's most likely smarts. This could be boldness or charm, though. That's the problem. It's between possibly smarts or something else. We can go for a... We know that smarts is higher than two stats, but boldness is our highest stat. So let's try and suss this out because we can't fail now. Attacking the dungeon boss in its heart. Text its ex-lovers and ask if they'd be willing to spitefully share its weaknesses. See, that could be bold or it could be charming. But I'm thinking more bold because it's not necessarily trying to use our, like our, our wiles in order to like woo. It's more of like, that's oh, that's a bold move. But then again, attacking at its privacy is smart. And we know we're smart. But if this is also creative, then we're good. <sighs> I, I hate having smarts as our middle stat, but I'm going to go with attacking in the heart because that seems like it's the bold option. And I swear to God, if it's frickin' charm, it's not, it can't be charm though, right? Attack the dungeon boss, text its ex-lovers. I mean, because yeah, why, why would we need to be charming for ex-lovers? Let's go for it. Yes! Oh, fuck yes! Oh God, it was so bold. I, I can't believe I fixed that. I can't believe I went through and I sussed it out. Yes, nailed it. Psychological warfare? Getting into Dungeon Boss's messy past relationships? Damn beef, you're kind of ruthless, huh? You would put your phone after a few minutes of internet stalking. You find the Dungeon Boss's Facebook profile. You check out its profile pictures. Looks like the boss used to date a warlock named Gerard. You send Gerard the completionist a friend request and DM him, asking if he'll tell you the Dungeon Boss's weak points. Gerard texts you back right away. He says, I'll tell you everything. Dungeon Boss was the first boy of all time. Anything I can do to hurt that fire lizard like he hurt me. His biggest weakness, insecurity. He would get super defensive if you mention his parents at all because he's so scared of being a disappointment to them. Huh? Huh? Not what I expected, but I'm glad I equipped this bracelet of cruel words just in case. <laughs> hey, lizard face! You're a total disappointment to your parents! Roar! Sorry, I'm not a fucking doctor, okay? Is that what you want me to say, Mom? Roar! No. <laughs> what? It's totally working. He's getting super distracted by his own emotional baggage. Gerard texts you again. He's probs breathing fire and shaking on the ground with rage by now, which means he's super vulnerable. Throw a bomb in his mouth. <laughs> Holy shit, of course. The classic bomb and open mouth strategy. Why didn't I think of that? Beef, you're a genius. Arabi throws a bomb in the dungeon boss's mouth. He explodes into a cloud of black dust and the ring of sustenance appears in the middle of the chamber. You did it. Mm. Damn, this ring of sustenance is awesome. When it's equipped, I get a plus 14 boost to my reaction speed, and any damage I take is reduced by half. Plus, it can produce an infinite supply of freshly baked mega bread. I told you it would be both a dungeon and bagel worthy. The Best dungeon like ever. I mean, I guess Woo, victory is ours. And thanks for saving my ass back there, Beef. I knew I could count on you. Your adventuring skills have earned you a rise respect and a fresh serving of mega bread. The bread gets you a new heart container along with three smarts. Nice. And now, we take her to the smoochy times. The most epic of smoochy times. The best of smoochy times. The worst of smoochy times. But only ever, the success of smoochy times. Because I think we got a secret ending, maybe. So let's ask Aravi and Hex. Let's see, ask Aravi to go to the moon shower? The meteor shower. Why did I say moon shower? Jesus. Let's do this. You seek out your favorite monster slayer. Hey, Beef, there's no time for talking. Adventure awaits! Arabi grabs your hand and whisks you away on another adventure. She doesn't talk much, but you've... She doesn't talk much, but you've learned talking is not her thing. She's a woman of action, and through action you bond. You go on an intense dungeon crawling session together. You slay and you loot. It's okay, she's got her way of connecting with her feelings. You feel like you can wait. It's hard to keep up with Arabi, but the good news is, after all of your plundering and battling... Oh, it's Geralt! I love it! It's the Geralt! <laughs> it's the Geralt bathtub! There's also time for relaxing. And when the intensity of battle wears off, Robbie seems to lower her guard. She may not confess her feelings today, but there's time. Today, what she does is ask you to wash her back. And for now, that's more than enough. Nice. Secret ending? Yes! We got the Geralt secret ending, The Witcher. Oh, I love it. We did it, you guys. We didn't fail. Now you can be proud of me. You can be the proudest of me you've ever been. And the game is going to crash when I click, probably. 
Oh, no, it's not gonna. Okay. Oh, no, I think it crashed when it was loading, didn't it? All right, so we can skip this. Also, because I get copyright claimed if I don't skip it. There we go. But we did it. Oh, you've just unlocked the Joe Crow? The Joe Crow. Interesting. <gasps> you've just unlocked the Hot Shot. Ooh, I like that. And that's it. So those are the things we unlock for next time. So thank you all for joining me on this episode of Monster Prom, where we've successfully unlocked a secret ending for the Monster Slayer and her cursed amulet, or at least cursed spirit living inside her amulet, Aravian Hex. And so, yeah, I don't know who I'm going to be wooing next. Probably maybe Milo or um, Calculester, or one of the ones that we haven't done in a while, you know. Maybe probably Milo, because he's new, or they're new, I should say. They're an aspect of death. So, yeah, so st stay tuned for that. And until next time, please... Take care, everybody. Monstrously special thanks to the top tier Patreon supporters, Midnight Sharzad and Cat Vanity.